Registered Phenomena Code 239 Object Class Beta Red Hazard Types Aggression Grouped Sapient Contact Memory Alteration Animated Containment Protocols RPC-239 is to be kept in a humanoid containment cell at Site-002. The temperature is to be kept at 20 degrees Celsius to prevent RPC-239's wood from deteriorating. RPC-239 is to be contained in a sealed humanoid containment cell in Level 4 of Site-002. Two guards are to be stationed near the chamber's entrance. A room for observing RPC-239's chamber via bulletproof glass is stationed adjacent to the cell. The observation room controls any and all exits to RPC-239's chamber, including the airlock and vents, which can be pneumatically sealed in the event of an attempted breach. Instances of RPC-239-1 are to be immediately terminated on site. Description. RPC-239 is a sapient 1.5 meter tall wooden puppet, resembling a clown. RPC-239 is able to move freely, and has a fully articulated face capable of facial movement and is capable of sight via the painted eyes. RPC-239 is passive and does not display aggression towards humans. RPC-239 is aggressive and violent towards humans. Psychological analysis has revealed that RPC-239's psychological profile corresponds to that of Lucas Walker Jr., although how the two are connected is currently unknown. An Afro-American serial killer that had committed several murders in Salt Lake City, Utah, between 19 and 19, before being killed by local police. They were notorious for reportedly wearing a clown outfit and usage of the nickname Bobo the Clown. Upon contact with a human, RPC-239 will attempt to kill or convert them into an RPC-239-1 instance. RPC-239-1 instances are created when an individual comes in direct contact with RPC-239. Instances appear to possess the same consciousness and memories of RPC-239, coordinating or acting independently to help RPC-239 achieve its goals. All instances of RPC-239-1 lose their original consciousness and cannot be restored to their previous state by any means. RPC-239-1 instances do not possess the ability to convert others into other instances. Addendum 239-1 Discovery RPC-239 was discovered on December 25, 2000, near the outer perimeter of Site-002, with a letter in hand. A full excerpt of the letter has been provided in Addendum 239-2 below. Upon discovery, RPC-239 was secured and transported to Site-002 for containment in Site-002. Addendum 239-2 Greetings, esteemed members of the Authority. You may be wondering who I am and how I know about you. There is no need to worry about that. Everything will be revealed at the right time. All I can say is that I am someone who highly admires you and your work which is why I have sent you this little gift of mine, hoping you will enjoy him. Good luck with your job, Mother. Addendum 239-3 Interviewed RPC-239 Interviewer Dr. Began log Dr. enters the chamber. Good morning, 239. Hey there, Doc. How's it going? I am good, thank you. I'm here to ask you a few questions. Of course! You must all be very confused. Well, go ahead. I'll answer your questions as best as I can. Your collaboration is appreciated. Alright. When we first found you, you were holding a letter signed by Mother. Now, another RPC object is talk… 235, right? And how do you know about that? She told me about your authority before sending me here. I see… What has she exactly told you about us, and how does she know? Oh, you know, basic stuff. How you work, some of the RPCs you have contained, etc., etc. As far as how she knows it, well, that's a mystery to me too. 
Hmm. Well, what can you tell us about Mother? I know she likes creating clowns like me. Can't tell you how much since she sent me away rather quickly. Where did she send you from? RPC-239 Shrugs Alright, can you tell us what she looks like? Hmm. She always wears a black robe and a white opera mask. Well, she was wearing that when I was around. Anything else you could tell us about her? Sorry, Doc, but I'm just a toy she created for you. What I told is all I know. In that case, I think our interview is over. Gets up. Hey. Don't you think you can go away without shaking my hand like a civil person first? Arvis's hand, smiling. I don't think that would be wise, 239. Oh, come on. After being so helpful, I will be denied a mere handshake? Smiles. Well, okay, I guess. Shakes RPC 239's hand, looking then around confusingly. RPC 239 grins. Are you okay, Doc? Yes. I am fine, 239. Thank you. Walks away. End log. Addendum 239-4 RPC-239 Containment Breach Report On February 3, 2000, RPC-239 breached containment. It was aided by 18 personnel, 17 of which had been terminated during recontainment, while one was found incapacitated in a hallway near the vault of incident reports in the USA. Researcher Aaron Harker confessed to accessing the vault to confirm a suspicion on the potential origin of RPC-239. When he discovered the incident report from July 18, 19, he was sure of RPC-239's identity as Lucas Walker, Jr. After exiting the vault, he was confronted by Dr. Now an instance of RPC-239-1, who first interviewed RPC-239. A fight ensued, and Researcher Harker was able to incapacitate the instance, proceeding to head in the direction of RPC-239's containment chamber before deciding to proceed topside. He was instrumental in coordinating the recontainment of RPC-239 and the termination of various instances of RPC-239-1, who managed to kill 109 personnel and attempted to breach the containment of RPC. After the containment breach. RPC-239's containment protocols has been revised, and the only survived instance of RPC-239-1 was contained in the Beta Sector of the Terran Containment Level of Site-002. Addendum 239-5 Interviewed RPC-239 Interviewer Head Researcher Aaron Harker Forward After the recontainment of RPC-239, See Addendum 239-4, an interview was conducted to prove head researcher Aaron Harker's theory. Begin Log Hello, RPC-239. Oh, Doc, do you have to be so cold? I have a name, after all. Smiles. I wanted to ask you a few questions. Since the last researcher that talked to you became a puppet of yours, we have employed some precautions before this interview and it is in your best interest to cooperate. And if you do, perhaps we will reward you, RPC-239. <sighs> oh, Doc. What could you possibly give me that you haven't already given me? Answer my questions, and you'll get a CSD to play with. RPC-239 straightens out. Oh, oh, Doc, you sure know how to satisfy my fancy. Alright, I'll answer your questions. Why do you look so much like Bobo the Clown? <laughs> wow, Doc. I would have never thought my little going out would have such an effect. Are you blind? I'm sorry, Lucas. I think I must have misread. <laughs> I'm sorry, Doc. Are you sure you don't need to go pay a visit to a psych? I think you are a whole lot more traumatized than I thought. What a shame. And I was thinking I was talking to a real artist with such a style that it couldn't be matched. Oh well. RPC-239 appears distressed. I'm sorry, what did you say? I mean, Lucas Walker Jr. had a certain style that truly made him stand out, and his killer clown persona was truly amazing. Oh, and let's not forget the genius each art piece had a certain message, 
a deeper meaning that went beyond the superficial and struck a chord. I guess I was mistaken. You're not that virtuoso. No, you're just a copycat. Copycat? Copycat? Lunges at the observation room window. That idiot couldn't even see an obvious trap and got caught and killed. Why don't you come in, you and see for yourself how much of a copycat I am, you… stares at H.R. Aaron. H.R. Harker remains calm, while the other researchers in the observation room panic and call ASF teams to be ready in case of a containment breach. RPC-239 stops shouting, Wait a minute. You are little Jimmy's brother. <laughs> oh. How much he screamed for you when I cut into him. <laughs> so you are not denying, now are you? Smiles back at RPC-239. No point in hiding it now that it's out, growls at HR Aaron. Now you better sing. Why were you sent here? <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Why do you think yours truly was hand-delivered to this specific site? Your authority keeps a lot of dangerous stuff here, doesn't it? Giving him some fresh air was my plan all along. What did Mother have in mind? Heck if I know, that woman, or rather that thing, is a mystery even to me. She simply brought me back to life as his puppet and told me what to do. Whatever she's got in mind, I can tell you this, it's gonna be big. I see. Now let's focus on you, shall we? You want to ask me about my powers, don't you? Detaches itself from the observation room window and drops down. Well, I'm sure I could, but I do feel very tired. Takes a seat at the table. And besides, you just happen to have someone else to talk to. True looks with disdain at RPC-239. Well, goodbye then. Enjoy your stay in a cell. Soon you'll have a new one. Also, no CSD for you, you sick. Walks away. RPC-239. You. End log. Closing Statement After the conclusion of the interview, RPC-239 entered a passive state and was transported via drones to a new cell in the beta sector of the Terran containment level of Site-002. H.R. Harker was assigned its head over the team, tasked with investigating POI-9574, Mother. Addendum 239-6 Interviewed RPC-239-1 Interviewer Head Researcher Aaron Harker Forward This interview was conducted to determine the properties of RPC-239-1, and to gauge whether Dr. Blake's consciousness was still present or completely gone. RPC-239-1 was tied to his chair and was unable to move. H.R. Aaron insisted on performing the interview in person, and proposed seeing whether RPC-239-1's and RPC-239's consciousnesses are linked. Begin log. Hello, RPC-239-1. I think you already know my name. Dr. Ah, oh, come on, Doc. You can't possibly forget yours truly. Just checking. RPC-239-1 was administered Class B amnestics in an attempt to reverse RPC-239's effects. The interview resumed shortly after. Dr. Are you there? Please, talk to me. Aaron, are you alright? What happened? My head hurt so much. Why am I tied up to a chair? Untie me immediately! H.R. Harker signaled the guards to be on standby as he untied RPC-239-1. <laughs> you really are so gullible just like Jimmy when I lured him into the forest. RPC-239-1 lunged and began strangling H.R. Harker who was immediately freed by two guards who promptly restrained RPC-239-1. Hello again, RPC-239-1. Parting is such a sweet sorrow. It's over. Tie him up and move him back to his cell. We may not be able to return Dr. B but we can still use him. 
Who knows what we might glean? But he doesn't seem to be able to infect others. End log. Closing statement. At the conclusion of the interview, RPC-239-1 attempted to make contact with H.R. Harker. H.R. Aaron was later evaluated, and it was concluded that RPC-239-1 instances do not possess the same abilities as RPC-239.